The last Catholic monarch, King James II's reign, was very brief. Unable to overcome the continued source of religious tension and constitutional crisis in the country, his short three years as king would accumulate in the Glorious Revolution. So in this video, let's transform his portraits to see how he might have looked in real life. So thank you for watching, subscribe for more historical recreations, and let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. I do have his father and brother, Charles I and Charles II, already recreated on my channel, plus a short synopsis of their lives, the link in the description. James was born in October 1633, the second surviving son of Charles I and the younger brother to Charles II. Upon his birth, he was given the title Duke of York and, much like his brother, grew up in the context of the English Civil War, resulting in his father's execution. He had, during this time, accompanied his father in battle at Edge Hill and then remained in Oxford when the city was subsequently besieged, resulting in the Duke of York being held within St. James Palace. His capture was not for long, as in disguise, he managed to flee the palace and reach safety of the continent, where, like his brother, the future Charles II, they found themselves in exile, while the nation dabbled in a republican experiment. Cromwell seized power in England as James began serving in the French army. Sadly, his success in the army was not to last when his brother turned to Spain for support in re reclaiming the throne. Spain was the enemy of France, and thus James found himself expelled from the French army. He would subsequently join the Spanish forces, forcing him to fight against his former colleagues and comrades. Eventually, international relations altered, and in 1659, the French and Spanish made peace, and ultimately, within a year, the political situation back in England had changed dramatically, allowing James and his brother to return to England victorious. His brother Charles II was thus restored to the throne and crowned king, bringing an end to the Republican failure. Meanwhile, James, as the youngest brother, was heir presumptive and served in a variety of roles in the military, including as Lord High Admiral, and later would command the Royal Navy during the Second Anglo-Dutch War. Whilst James had an eventful life in his military career, he had an equally momentous private life as he caused a controversy by marrying the commoner Anne Hyde, daughter of Charles's minister Edward Hyde. Sadly, after losing six children in infancy, only two of their daughters survived, Mary and Anne. In 1671, James was faced by more heartache when his loyal wife, Anne, also died. Meanwhile, James had become increasingly drawn to the Catholic faith, having been exposed to many elements whilst in France. His conversion took place in secrecy, however, in the context of growing anti-Catholic resentment and fear-mongering, the introduction of the Test Act in 1673 forced all military officers to denounce Catholicism. For James, this was simply too much, and thus he gave up his position as a Lord High Admiral, and his Catholicism was no longer a secret. As a result of James's religious leanings, his brother Charles found himself navigating dangerous territories, later advocating the marriage of James's daughter Mary to the Protestant William of Orange as a means of displaying his daughter's Protestant ideals in the face of her father's Catholic credentials. Nevertheless, King Charles II did allow his brother's second marriage to Catholic Mary of Modena, a young Italian princess. This did nothing to allay the fears of both Parliament and the general public who saw the lack of children produced by Charles II as a potential threat leading to a Catholic king. The country soon gave way to anti-Catholic hysteria, and thus the exclusion crisis followed in a blatant attempt to overhaul the principles of hereditary lines of succession in the monarchy. Unfortunately for those who feared a governance by a Catholic king, the death of Charles II from a stroke in 1685 with no legitimate children resulted in James succeeding to the throne. For many, their worst fears had been realized. James was next in line, you see. There was little that could be contested and so Westminster Abbey, in 1685, proclaimed King James II. In his first tentative steps as king, all seemed well, as the new parliament, called the Loyal Parliament, appeared favorable, granting James a considerable income. He appeared king to work hard and reconcile the differences exposed by the exclusion crisis. However, the divisions were already deep-rooted, and within no time at all, 
James had to face off a number of rebellions. There was the Monmouth Rebellion, where his nephew attacked him but lost, and then there was the Earl of Argyll from Scotland, who attacked him also, but lost. You see, these two anti-Catholic uprisings considerably improved and showed strength and reassurance of his authority. Nevertheless, in response to these threats, James enlarged his standing army, which went against usual traditions. And this caused social alarm, which would be enlarged by his decision to include Catholics in a number of high-ranking positions, including the Privy Council, Army, Navy, and Parliament itself. He also issued the Declaration of Indulgence, which was a significant step in religious tolerance by permitting Catholic worship for all denominations. He was confident he could gain enough support for this. You see, in 17th century England, Protestantism had become ingrained in every constitution and social fabric of the country. Therefore, James's religious tolerance of Catholics and their denominations was eroding the traditional monopoly of the Anglican Church. Meanwhile, those hoping to see James as the last Catholic monarch were soon to have their hopes dashed when, in June of that year, his wife gave birth to a baby boy, meaning a new Catholic heir was set to inherit the Stuart monarchy. So with anti-Catholic sentiment reaching an all-time high, leading members of the parliament known as the Immortal Seven, which was a coalition of Whigs and Tories, invited the Protestant William of Orange, who was married to James's daughter, to assume the throne instead. Such was the state of religious intolerance that the English political classes preferred to have a Dutchman on the throne than a legitimate English Catholic monarch. September 1688, James heard news of William of Orange's imminent arrival. He was accompanied by around 15,000 troops, leading James to panic in the face of such a threat to his reign. After marching his troops to Salisbury, James had an aberration, totally unnerved, he left for London and fled to the safety of France following his opponents to declare his abdication in his absence. The path was now clear and in February 1689, William of Orange and James's daughter Mary were declared joint rulers as ordained by Parliament. James would make one last ditch effort to regain the throne in March of that year. At the Battle of Boyne, however, despite his French support, he lost the battle and lived the rest of his life in exile in France. Dying in September 1701, he was 67. Amongst all the things this ended with, the tumultuous constitutional crisis which had extended over several generations of monarchy had finally reached its climax. The constitutional monarchy was here to stay. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested, you can check out his daughter, Queen Anne, on my channel. I did a recreation of her face. Subscribe for more recreations. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow. It allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments if you want to see you next. I do make a list of all your suggestions. And I will see you in the next one.